Waking. Chronic fatigue and anxiety or depression, it's, it's, it's a mental state, it's a mental disease. So it's difficult for someone to understand because they can't see the bruise or the cut that's happening on the inside. And I think it's good that people talk about it because it doesn't make it so... They don't feel isolated like, geez, I'm the only one feeling this way. Mm, What's yeah. going on? Um, but rest. Listen to what, you know, when it's a bad day, stop. Don't do too much. Uh, don't push yourself. That was a huge thing for me. We just keep on pushing, pushing, achieving. Stop. There's a reason why you're tired. And, yeah, between that and meditation and yoga, you know, exercise is important, but it's the type of exercise you do. Um because even exercise, I realized that it was kind of reciprocating an anxiety attack, that heavy breathing, the tight throat. So I actually didn't want to even do it. I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. So yoga was great for me because I could control it and calm me down. Uh, and, of course, get out into nature. Yeah. Mm. Therapy on another level. Mm-hmm. Therapy on another level. That was also a huge turning point for me. I had met a friend. Um, it's crazy. I knew her from like eight years ago. I moved overseas, came back, never saw her again. Obviously, you know, you see each other on social media, but nothing like conversation. And she went through a massive change. She lost a lot of weight. I mean, she was very overweight when I first met her. She lost a lot of weight. And I just come back to George. I was like in the middle of my anxiety. And I remember she, re- she reached out to me. She's like, Joe, I'm going to do this photo shoot to show how my I've lost and just for myself if you're confident I'm like awesome she's like can you please be there I want to I need some tips and some help so I'm like I was nervous because you know when you're in the middle of anxiety you scared that will happen at any stage mm-hmm. so I, I told her I said listen Donna I've got I'm struggling with anxiety it might be a bad day if you're okay with that and just saying that out loud kind of gives you a little bit more strength wow. mm-hmm. there's, no, there's nothing you're hiding anymore Person mm. knows they're okay with it. You know you're okay with it. So it was a great day. It was fun. And she said, oh, Joe, I hike. I go hiking in the mountains. Will you please join me? None of my friends or anyone else hikes anymore. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this. Because, again, ang- anxious. You know, it's that whole um, recreation of what you feel. The heart rate goes up, the throat swells up, everything. I'm like, okay, Donna, I'm going to try. And that's how we started. We mm. started to walk in the mount and it was such 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 a healing mentally and physically process for me just being out in nature and being with someone who understands who's there for you when you need them and not on a not in a judgmental way or obsessive way but just they're just there in the background such a great message that jody i think uh we you know we've often spoken about it is just the fact of saying it out loud to yourself first and foremost is super powerful. But then someone else is listening and someone else has the same thing and they go, it just allows them to uh, first of all, realize that not only other people are going through this, but there might actually be a way to fix it. And it might Ooh. even be quite simple, you know, or something like that. You, you, you sometimes think you're in this world of like, um, there's no way out and, um, you yeah. know, it's, just, it's so cool that you, uh, and obviously nature on the back of that is a, you know, we were also speaking about this a lot lately, Gareth and I is, is slowing things down in your life. And you were mentioning it earlier in your, your thoughts, but I think nature has a way of just automatically doing that when you immerse yourself in nature and keep quiet for a bit. So, um, yeah, I think those are really great, uh, tips, you know? I mean, just, I don't know, I always tell a client, just go and sit outside of the garden mm-hmm. and watch a bird. They're not thinking about tomorrow, what they still have to go mm. and see or and catch, or they didn't think about what they didn't catch yesterday. They're the presence in the moment. And sometimes they'll sit there and look at the bird bar for 10 minutes. The bird itself, it's just there. It's just in that moment. Mm. And then it'll fly off and come back. And I'm like, that is a perfect reflection of how the human brain should work. I mean, yeah. they are an animal thrives. There's no fear. There's no anxiety. There's no um, questioning. It is what it is now in this moment. And it's being itself to its fullest potential. Hmm. And to be able to watch that and experience it, you start to, you know, I think us as humans will never get to that point. But just to watch and experience, start to be able to take in the, um, 
the message that nature is trying to give us, and that is to be able to just be fully present and not worry and have this immense fear about the past or the, pre or the future. Just be present and yeah, slow it down. We live way too fast, way too fast. <laughs> yeah, that's very powerful. I think a lot of people and it's probably because of marketing and stuff too they think that they, they have to do certain things to be healthy you know and actually it's very simple to be healthy and it doesn't have to cost you anything like whatsoever drink more water sleep more go outside eat seasonal boom there's a few that, that costs you nothing like you know what i mean and, and that's probably I don't know. That's probably the 90% of what you need to do. And it's, um, it really is that easy, but, but unfortunately there's this whole other game going on in the world. And that's like, you know, the corporate game, making cash, blah, 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 which, which of course has its place, but like, you know, it kind of overtakes oh, yes. the, the other bits. And you, and, and, and you have to be conscious, uh, continuously conscious of the two because mm. you can't live without the one and the other. I mean, it's, it's you do. You have to make money. It is a fast-paced world, but you have to be aware that if you live in that environment, it's going to catch up to you some other time, and you need a plan on how to counteract it to be able to balance your life out. But yeah, like I was saying, it's so simple to be healthy. The whole excuse about oh, it's so expensive, I can't do this. No, uh, it's one of the most affordable ways of living, mm. and unfortunately, most people are addicted to um, processed expensive food. It's an addiction. It's nothing else. Mm -hmm. And you have to kind of pull them out of that addiction and go through with tools, get rid of all of it, and then start again. And it's not an easy process. Oh, change is hard. Um, no one likes change. We like to be in comfort in our little, <laughs> our little zone. So when you have to change everything up and it, it becomes uncomfortable, no one likes it. For sure. And talking about change, you actually went through a big change yourself, I guess, in terms of who you were and who the Jodie Carlett brand was, you know, so you went from like a bikini bodybuilding girl to more like a yogi, I guess, in a way type of, um, type of um, girl or brand. Um, what was that uh, you know, transformation like for you and, and how difficult was it to, I guess, reinvent yourself? Um, I always, back when it was the bikini brand, you know, the whole fitness, strong, sexy kind of look, as much as I love it, I still struggled to connect with it. I never quite fit it in. Um, you know, even when, when, when these different supplement companies would do promotions and stuff, I was never the face for it. I mean, I did not look apart. And even though I promoted that lifestyle, I struggled with it because I didn't feel like I put it in. It wasn't me. So it did gently transition and I slowly moved over and was more plant-based and did more functional training and blah, blah, blah. But it was only when I actually got anxiety that I actually, it forced me to re-look at who I was. And just be honest about it. This is me. I like it. Own it. Um, and yeah, and once you did that, it slowly transitions into who I am today. And yeah, you lose a lot of friends and you lose a lot of clients or whatever the case, but that's okay. You gain a lot more. You actually get to where you need to be. And I enjoyed the transition. It made sense because I was going to something I wanted to. It wasn't going away from something I still thought I had to. Um, it was nice letting go. Mm -hmm. actually quite a nice feeling of letting go. It's okay. You can let that go. It's not you anymore. It doesn't define you anymore. Because, um, you know, being a pro and being part of a federation and living up to a certain standard, for me, that was the de definition of who Jody was. And I thought if I didn't have that, who am I? And it kind of scared me. But at the same time, I knew it wasn't me. So I had to let it go. And when you do, it's like, ah, oh, relief. I'll be mm -hmm. myself. <laughs> mm. Um, and I mean, I know I'm going to do some more transitions and changes and that's how you yeah. grow as individuals and humans. But um, I think if you allow it to let it, let it flow and don't try to hold onto it and restrict it, then it will be a good process and enjoyable. Mm. And like you said... Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. 
Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy Cape Fold, my 